All right, so what I'll do in this video is work through an example of an optimization problem. So optimization problems are really all over the place in science and, and economics and business. If you want to uh, minimize the manufacturing costs of something, or you want to minimize travel time, or you want to maximize space of a certain uh, whatever, I mean, these are all optimization problems. It's all about finding maxima and minima of a function. Now, what is most challenging with optimization problems pretty often is not so much the calculus part, but is to translate the written problem into a calculus problem. Okay, so what we'll do now is just work through an example step by step, and then I'll summarize the strategy, and we'll do many more examples in class next week. Here's my example. Suppose that we want to build a cylindrical can that holds exactly uh, 20 pi meters cube of water, so the volume is fixed. What we know uh, is that the material uh, that we need for the top and the bottom of the can costs $10 per meter square, while the material for the side costs $8 per meter square. And what we want to do is find the radius r and the height h of the can such that the cost is minimized, so we can build the most economical can. Okay, so that's a typical problem that uh, someone uh, working in business could uh, face. So the first thing is uh, always, as always, is to write the problem carefully and draw a diagram if necessary, so that it helps understanding what's going on. So in this case, we're trying to build a cylindrical can. So here's our can, and well, the properties of the can are given as the radius and the height of the can. Okay. So uh, there's something as well that we know here, which is that the volume of the can, so remember that the volume of a cylinder is given by the area of the circle, pi r squared times the height. Now what we're given is that the volume is fixed, and it's precisely equal to 20 pi meters cubed of water. So I'm not going to use units here just to simplify the calculation. Just bring them back at the end. Okay, so that, that is nice, and that gives us a relation between the radius and the height. I can... Uh, divide by pi and I solve for h, and I'll get that h is equal to 20 over r squared. And that has to be fixed because we're requiring that the volume of the can is exactly 20 pi meters cubed. All right, so that's good. Now the next thing we want to do is uh, write down a function for the thing that we're trying to optimize. In this case, what we're trying to minimize is the cost of manufacturing the can. So I'm going to call this c for the cost function. What is this? Well, this is given by first the surface of the top and bottom part of the can times the cost of manufacturing the surface, which is $10 per meter square, so times 10, plus the surface of the side times the cost of manufacturing that surface, which is $8 per meter square. And now, of course, I need to replace what these things in brackets are in terms of equations. Well, the surface of the top is just the surface of the disk, which is pi r squared, and same thing for the bottom. So this will give me 10 times twice pi r squared for the surface of the top and the bottom. Now the surface of the side of a cylinder is given by the circumference of the disk times the height, so that's 2 pi r times h. So here I'll get 2 pi rh. So if I simplify, I get that the cost function is given by 20 pi r square plus 16 pi rh. And this is what I'm trying to minimize. Now note, however, that the way I wrote here is I wrote the cost function here is in terms of two variables. So I have r and h in here. So with what we've seen so far in calculus, we do not know how to minimize a function of two variables. However, there's something cool here, which is given in the problem. There's a relation between these variables. Because we're keeping the volume of the can fixed, we know that the height must always be equal to 20 over r squared. So we can substitute this back in our cost function to get a function of a single variable. What I'll get is that the cost function is 20 pi r squared plus 16 pi r times h, which is 20 over r squared. And I can simplify to get 20 by r squared plus 16 times 20, which is 320 pi over r. And now I have my cost function as a function of a single variable, so I can try to minimize it using calculus method. All right, so let me change slide because I won't have enough space. So this was 20 pi r squared plus 320 pi over r, if I'm not mistaken, for the cost function. 
And then what I want to do is I want to minimize c as a function of r. And what is the interval of definition for my function here? So I'm taking r to be anything between 0 and infinity. So the radius cannot be 0 because it doesn't make any sense, but it can be any positive number uh, all the way to be very, very, very large. Of course, we don't expect that if it's super, super large, you get the best manufacturing cost, but in principle it could be. So we have to allow any positive radius here. Okay, so that's good. So what we want to do now is find the minimum of the function over this interval. So we know that the minimum here, so this is not a closed interval, so we cannot use the closed interval method, but we can just try to find the minimum by first finding the critical points and then studying the properties of the, of the function to find the absolute minimum of the function over the domain here. So what we want to do is find the critical points. Remember that critical points here are whenever dcdr is equal to zero or dcdr does not exist. So let's just calculate the derivative. So dc dr here will be equal to 40 by r minus 320 pi over r squared. So I can put that in the common denominator and then factor out a 40 pi over r squared. So I'll get r cubed minus 8. So now I see that there's two critical points in principle. There's a, a 0. So dc over dr is equal to 0 at uh, where r cubed is equal to 8, which is r equals to 2. And there's also a point where it does not exist, but this is r equals to 0, which is not part of our domain. So in fact, this, the, the, the point where the derivative does not exist is not in our domain, so it's not really a critical point of the function. So there's, in the end, only one critical point of the function, which is at r equals to 2. And remember that if r is equal to 2, then we had that h is equal to 20 over, is it 20 over r squared? Yeah. So in this case, that would be 20 over 4, which would be 5. So the critical point of our function here is that r equals to 2 and h equals to 5. But uh, we don't know yet whether this is a, a, the absolute minimum of the function. right? We just know it's a critical point. So we have to do a little more work to show that this is the absolute minimum of the cost function. So what we'll do is just do a sign analysis as usual. So I'm going to write c prime and c here. My critical point is that r equals to 2. I have r greater than 2 and r between 0 and 2. Now if I look at the derivative and if r is between 0 and 2, the derivative here is going to be negative, while if r is greater than 2, the derivative is going to be positive, and it's 0 here, so I get decreasing, increasing. What that means is that this is a local min, but because it's the only uh, critical points over the whole interval, this is actually an absolute min uh, for the cost function over the interval between 0 and infinity. All right, so that's pretty much the end of the problem. So now I would conclude the problem by just saying that the cost is minimized for the radius being 2 meters, just reinstalling the units here. And the height, as we've just calculated, is equal to 5 meters. And that would be the end of the problem. You could also calculate the cost the actual cost at the at this uh, for this choice of uh, radius and height, even though that's not part of the question. Just for fun, you could calculate it uh, using the cost function that we have here. But anyway, this is the answer of the problem. Cool. Okay, so that was a very typical problem. So whenever you have to uh, solve an optimization problem, here's a step-by-step -step strategy. First, you read the problem carefully. Very important. Draw a picture if necessary introduce notation, so you want to assign a symbol for the thing that you're trying to maximize or minimize. In this case, this was the cost function, so I called it capital C. And then you also want to assign symbols to all the unknown quantities in the problem. Here we had the radius r and the height h. Then you write an equation for the thing you're trying to minimize in terms of these uh, unknown quantities. So this is when I wrote the equation for capital C in terms of r and h. If you, it happens that you have more than one variable, then you need to find some relationship between those from the data of the problem. So this was the relationship between R and H given by the fixed volume of my cylinder, so that you can rewrite the thing you're trying to optimize as a function of a single variable. 
This is when I rewrote the cost function as a function of the radius only. And finally, once you have a function of a single variable, you can find its absolute max or min using what we've seen in calculus. If it happens to be defined over a closed interval, you can use a closed interval method, which is faster. Otherwise, like in the case that I had here, you have to study of the pro properties of the function and figure out, find the critical points, the local min and max, and then figure out which of those, if uh, you have to, is the absolute min or max of the function.